know you're uh, a little bit late, and, and why were you late? Well, we are discussing the ban on nuclear weapons of the United Nations. So there's a, uh, it's a treaty that has been negotiated with all the nation states, and it has been quite a process, but it's going to be signed hopefully tomorrow. So. Guys, I'm really excited, not only because we're here with the esteemed Emat Kiai, but today's the first day with the boom mic and the new mic, like and this. you're on air, brother. Oh, boy. I know that we're like tight on time, and I want to respect your schedule, but here's the thing. We want to know a little bit about... You know, we, we here at A Life in Shorts are very interested in nation branding and, and all the cool things that are happening around the world that the that maybe the media isn't talking about as much. Um, tell us a little bit about what is the current state of affairs for entrepreneurship in Iran and what is your role at the American Iranian Council to facilitate that bridge between what's happening there and what's happening here. Fantastic introduction and fantastic start. So, Iran, let's quickly just get some of the basics down. Um, the Iranian uh, society, the sense, has been grappling with three forms of sanctions. Now, you have um, international sanctions that have been on Iran, which stops getting things in and out of the country. That's mostly over its nuclear program. Number two is also internal sanctions by the government by filtering or censoring information flow uh, to its society. So, um, thirdly, there's also um, some socio-economic, cultural limitations that have also been placed on the population. Now, the one good news is that the Iranian demographics is very much opposed towards uh, a more knowledge-based economy. And what do I mean by that? It's a very young country, it's very educated, and it's got a high literacy rate. And because, precisely because of those sanctions, a typical Iranian, um, will be able to find its way around, circumvent these limitations by its government, by the society, and by the international community by placing sanctions, but becoming really good at finding loopholes. Okay. So, take that, add a very robust STEM education, which is science, technology, and, and, and education, education yeah. and mathematics, yeah. Engineering, sorry, engineering, the East for engineering. The STEM graduates on Iran, well, first of all, they're like the third most uh, graduates in the world per capita. Mm. So we have a lot of engineers, we have a lot of, lot of mathematicians, and those are the key ingredients you need in a team to, for new tech, tech startups. So this uh, civil society and entrepreneurship culture that runs through the veins of the Iranians for millennia, because remember, this was the epicenter of trade. So they know how to sell things. Those combinations has created a very vibrant, exciting, entrepreneurial uh, environment where these young, educated youth are entering this new knowledge-based economy. And we've seen some really amazing highlights. So that's 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 an excellent sort of macro view of what's happening. Tell us, for the people that don't know who you are, tell us a little bit about who you are, how you ended up as a policy advisor, and a little bit more about the work that you're doing particularly for sure. Well, I, I wear very many hats, but I actually was the executive director of the American Iranian Council for a few years. I have come out of that role to be more of a policy advisor. My background is in economic and political development and a focus on negotiations that I got from Columbia University. I'm an Iranian, but I was raised throughout the world. I was born in Iran, raised in Nigeria, South Africa, Zimbabwe, the UK, and also now in the United States. So I bring on to the table. Why were you raised all these places? You know, it, um, our plane was supposed to get to the United States, but we diverted slightly, and uh, I should blame my papa for that. Um, but it's been a very enriching experience, and uh, has allowed me to have uh, access to multiple cultures and backgrounds, and make me more worldly. Uh, so this was like before they used to say, like, this plane is going to New Orleans. <laughs> if you don't want to be going to New Orleans, get off the plane I mean, right we were now. trying to get to. L LA, but it became Lagos, which yeah. is Nigeria. Sort of uh, just same. a diversion. Sort of the same. But it was uh, fascinating, and uh, well, that's my background. I've worked a lot on the nuclear negotiations between the world powers and Iran uh, from a more civil society uh, perspective. I've also done my research at Princeton University on nuclear matters and weapons of mass destruction, non proliferation, so this is how we want to get rid of these yeah. deadly uh, weapons. 
At the same time, I'm also fascinated about the tech startup scene and technology and the role of technology not just to make our lives better, but also what role does it play in diplomacy, in economic vitality, and also to bring about a shift from you know, the center of government to the populace using technology to get their voices out and get their products out. So Ahmad, tell, tell us one or two or three technologies that you're most excited about right now um, around those sort of three different buckets of well, personally, objectives. personally for me, because I also worked a lot on sanctions, what was fascinating for me to do was to see how did the Iranian public circumvent these sanctions. And one of them was financial sanctions. So cryptocurrency is very much a, a, a topic that I'm really interested in, first and foremost. Secondly, finding avenues on how we can take existing new techs that have actually reached a mature stage in the market and how we can then adjust it to another market like Iran because it's an emerging market in a sense. And finally, mm -hmm. what I'm really interested in is how do we broaden the platform where there's a knowledge transfer between communities of tech scene, may that be the Iranian diaspora in Los Angeles or in in Silicon Valley or elsewhere, and how can we can bridge to then assist these sort of new uh, markets uh, in new technology to develop. So this is sort of like a transfer of knowledge, skills, and also mentorship. How how open is Iran to external entrepreneurship in the country? Very much supportive. Now, yeah. is it easy to get into Iran? No. Because of the, all the regulations? All of those regulations, especially for Americans, because the rest of the world has removed their sanctions to, to a large extent. And there's, I mean, uh, I was in Iran and I, we couldn't even uh, stay in a hotel because there's so many delegations coming from Europe and Asia to get into literally the last frontier in an emerging market. So, whereas every other market has been saturated, Iran is this 80 million, you know, vast economy. A uh, vast population, a huge market. Wouldn't you want to get into it? I would. And if you're an entrepreneur, you will have a bigger appetite for uh, risk. And if you see that your product, your service has a, a nuanced place in the Iranian market, there are ways to get it. Now, let me put it in the caveat that there are uh, US sanctions still in place on Iran. So you have to be very careful. I'm not saying just jump into yep. the Iranian market. There are exemptions to the rule and those can be identified but um, as my lawyer would tell me right now please consult your lawyer before you make any other moves. <laughs> Fantastic. I think that you've given us a couple of really amazing uh, tips as well as resources that people can contact. Um, where can people find you? Well I'm on the American Iranian Council website and, and I'm on all of those uh, other goodies that they make me do. All like, those uh, things that are social? Like Twitter and everything. Um, but, uh, but if you, again, if you reach out, my colleagues at the council uh, know how to find me. And I'm, again, saying this uh, from the bottom of my heart, I, I really believe, because I've been working on US-Iran relations for many years. And to see this relationship be so poisoned by the rhetoric from both capitals, and you know, this new administration may not be necessarily helping the cause of peace, but I think it is even a greater responsibility on us as citizens, as people of you know, goodwill, to be able to go beyond this sort of facade that is being painted of one another and break through that, see the reality. I even encourage, well, for Iranians to come to the United States has become a little bit more tricky since the travel ban of President Trump, but the Iranians don't have, have not reciprocated in a similar way so there's a lot of opportunities for Americans to visit Iran. And for that, I also encourage your listeners, the viewers and others, it will be really encouraging for you to uh, literally go to Iran, experience it for yourself. Yeah. I mean, I remember we have sent many delegations to Iran and every single one of them, without an exception, including my colleagues at the American Iranian Council, who are not Iranians, have come back astounded at the level of hospitality, and sheer pleasure to meet the Iranians and the Iranians to meet them and say, why are we even in this debacle in the first place? Long histories, long levels of long list, laundry list of issues, but I think it is this generation that has to change it. And towards that end, I hope that you reach out to our organization, 
and to yourselves. For the people that are listening that are the companies, the Silicon Valley leaders in the world, uh, please reach out to this man or to me and, and I'll make the connect. Um, I can actually already think of a, a person I'd like to connect you with for your mentorship slash resource guide network for entrepreneurs in the valley. Um, and uh, I really appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Sir, I hope that we didn't like mess up the entire peace treaty. No, let's just, let's, we'll, okay. we'll know by tomorrow. If, 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 uh, so the peace if treaty anything fails, goes wrong, it's I know totally it your fault. BTV's fault. Well, Guys, thank you so it. much for watching. Thank you for coming in. Let's Another see. episode of BTV for the books. It's your hour, it's your dream, it's your life. So go get it, because if you don't, nobody else will. Thanks for watching. Thanks, brother. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, bro.